Today I'm making hot dog ceviche and you're gonna like it, gosh dang it. Welcome back to Mythical Kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by AMPM. Now as your resident snack enthusiast, I am thrilled to be teaming up again with AMPM. Today we're turning these craveable foods into three equally delicious late night snacks that will cure any case of the midnight munchies and you know I get the midnight munchies a lot. Now AMPM's not just about convenience, they are about cravenience, the point where the most craveable foods intersect with the most convenient experience. From breakfast sandwiches to croissants and more, everything's hot, fast, and delicious. AMPM also boasts up to 24 fountain flavors and a rotating selection of agua fresca flavors, including their famous horchata. And coffee lovers, their hot and cold coffee offerings are unparalleled. All these delicious treats are specially crafted for AMPM locations, so you know you're getting the good stuff. Visit your nearest AMPM location so you can experience cravenience for yourself. All right, enough of me talking. Let's see if my snack hack ingenuity can impress my fellow mythical kitcheneers and which snack they'll pick as a favorite. Let's get cooking. Now, when a lot of people see midnight munchy cravenient snacks, they think that they sort of sprung into the air without any intention. No, no, no. What you want, you want a midnight snack that makes you feel a little bit fancy. So I thought about the fanciest region of the world that I could think of, and that's Palm Desert, California. That's right, Palm Desert, home to the best dates grown in Palm Desert, California. And, I don't know, dude, last time I was there, I had bacon wrapped dates, and I was like, man, we need to wrap more delicious soft fruits in bacon and then uh, fry them and cover them in sugar sauce. So, what is an apple cinnamon pastry from AMPM but a delicious soft squishy fruit waiting to get wrapped in bacon? So that's what we're doing. This is simple, this is easy, this is level one. This is starting on rookie mode when you're doing your midnight munchie snacks, but it is delicious, there's gonna be a huge payoff. All we're gonna do, we're gonna cut these into quarters. This is the smartest thing anybody's ever done. All right, so I'm gonna cut the bacon into two. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna wrap it once. I want full bacon envelopment. And so we're gonna go ahead and wrap the whole thing. And then tooth, why do they do a little hole in the toothpick? I can't get a single toothpick out. I'm sorry, I'm trying my best, it's very difficult, okay. Boom, toothpick it, now we're just gonna simply repeat this process and then we're gonna dust them in cinnamon sugar. I'll stop back in a second. Uh, all right, we have all these wrapped in bacon and now we're gonna make some cinnamon sugar. We're doing like a <clears throat> apple, cinnamon, sugar, cinnamon, bacon. These are words, what do they mean? Literally nobody knows. Um, Cause I'm not a smart guy that could have a smart guy movie made around him. Other smart guy movies, ooh, the one that tried to capture the giant monkey and then bring it back to America as a sort of sideshow but it was a metaphor for a bunch of stuff. That was a smart guy. One who tried to bring dinosaurs back, not a smart guy. I could have told you how that was gonna end. There's foil and there's an air fryer. We're air frying this. Air fryers are my mortal enemies, even more than prehistoric creatures that have been brought back to life via a bombastic uh, bioengineering. Um, we're literally just gonna roll this in here and then I'm gonna forget that I used this to, for raw bacon and then I'm gonna try and use it on my oatmeal tomorrow and somebody's gonna have to come slap the bowl out of my hands. Good stuff, good stuff, too much good stuff. Hey oh, shout out Tungus. Uh, Tungus is Tungus is an acronym, not an initialism, because it spells out a word that you say phonetically. Look at us go. You like take this out. Here's what we're gonna do. I take that out. We're gonna line this with foil, and we're gonna put all the bacon on there. We're gonna shut it, and then we're gonna cook it on account of ow. This is a cooking show. Boom. Two, three, this is enough for eight friends, provided they have very small appetites. Six friends, provided that two of them have small appetites. Four friends, provided they have medium appetites. Or one, Tumgus. One, Tumgus and me, which, AMPM, if you're looking for a star of the feature film Tumgus and me, I think David Oyelowo, I think he'd do really well. I think he could just really own that. Uh, all right, shut the door, pop that in, um, go! It's voice activated, we got the new model. We're gonna bake this off for like 12 minutes, check back in a sec. They say during a typical five course progressive tasting menu, you should start light and end heavy. However, with a three course midnight munchie cravenient menu, you wanna start heavy 
then hit light, then go back to heavy, circle around a couple more times, put your left hand in, put your left hand out, and then that's how I tend to do it. So we're going with something nice, light, bright, acidic, a little bit spicy. We're, we're making hot dog ceviche. Now, you may have never heard the term hot dog ceviche before. I know I'm introducing you like a first year college professor to several ideas that you may be uncomfortable with, but, <laughs> but. Listen, this is weird. I had a friend from Guam and he would eat a snack that was like canned lunch meat or hot dogs that were cut up and a bunch of lime juice and salt and a condiment called fina deni on it. Uh, and I ate it and I was like, this rules, like cold processed delicious meats with citrus on it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I wanna cut up the hot dogs first cause I wanna show you how we're doing them. Take them out of the buns. You can save the buns. You can toast those up for bread pudding later. But what we're gonna do with the hot dogs, we're gonna do a, almost like a hot dog brunoise or a uh, more like just a proper fine dice in the hot dogs. So you wanna sort of cut them into logs. That way you can get batons from them later. Make sure you tuck your fingers. Now, 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 <laughs> you know, you could just slice the hot dogs, but I like everything to be nice, mixed up and fine in there. So we're gonna slice these, and we're gonna stack them back up. There we go, get that delicious hot dog meat, boom. Now, we're dicing, classic French technique. And then we get a bunch of nice crunchy vegetables in there. Ceviche really is just one of my favorite foods. I eat it as often as I can, especially come up at midnight. You don't have any delicious cured fluke in your fridge. Yo boy, what do I what do I make ceviche out of? Boom, hot dogs. Right, we're gonna dice this onion really fine. Just need a little bit of onion in there just to add that crunch. Little bit of bite. There you go. Grade the onion, pop that in there. Cucumber, nice, light, refreshing. This is basically a salad at this point. This actually, this, this kind of like literally is a salad. <laughs> we're gonna take this cucumber, cut it in half. We skinned it just a little bit, you don't have to. You don't have to skin your cucumber, you know? <laughs> it's the most real cooking thing I've said. Anytime you're cutting something into perfect little squares, you must first start with perfect little rectangles and this gets smaller into squares. That is the most math that I learned in like 22 years of education that has actually helped me in real life. That and, what other math did I learn that helped me? Y equals mx plus b. Wait, when do I use y equals mx plus b? You don't do what is slope intercept form? What are what are these? You're like bringing back traumatic memories from childhood. My football coach accosted me in front of the whole team. and was like, Josh, you're failing math. Stop it. And I was like, if that isn't a metaphor for how a football coach would teach you to stop failing math, I don't know what is. Uh, and you know what? I did keep failing. Cool, cucumber, boom, popped in there. Serrano chili, it's like a jalapeno, but hotter. And I enjoy that. I like to cut this just into little slices. Get nice little whole bits of serrano in there. You could dice it up so it incorporates more evenly, but I like getting a nice little violent shock to the system of a whole chunk of serrano in there. All right, boom, boom, boom. Let me hear you say wayo. Thank you. Watermelon, a base that we are going to use. Let me let me do it. Why tell you when I can? We're gonna add a little bit of the sour patch watermelon freeze, which. This is, this is like the best thing I've ever tasted. Honestly, this has such an incredible balance of acid and sugar and that delightful watermelon flavor in there. And then the freeze part is gonna keep your ceviche extra cold, which is actually going to make your vegetables crisper. This, this is just a real thing. This is real cookery right here. When I make ceviche, a lot of the times I actually soak all of my ingredients in ice water beforehand because it just brings out that nice natural crispness. And then we're gonna take some watermelon and try and cut this into small cubes. Good. Turn that. Take this. Check this out. Check this out. A too fast, too furious action on this. Pow! There it is. Watermelon, nice pop of sweetness in there to offset the saltiness of the hot dog. Because again, this is hot dog ceviche. <laughs> Teacher said I'd never amount to anything. How about now? Now all your other students, oh, they went to grad school. They're working, you're doing stem cell research. Hot dog ceviche. All right, I want one more hot dog in there. <laughs> I really hope all of my classmates who did go to medical school are also successful, to be fair. If they win, we win, you know? <laughs> all right, one more hot dog. Uh, check back in a minute. I'm just gonna up my hot dog to other things ratio. We got more hot dog in there. I'm gonna take a little bit of cilantro for freshness. I'm gonna save some leaves for garnishing. <laughs> what is this meal that we're making? I love it. Did you know ceviche, the root word, <laughs> comes from Sikhbaj, which was a Baghdadi royal court dish made about a thousand years ago out of vinegared lamb. Oh, you didn't know that? Oh, sorry. 
You're just wasting your time over here. Cool, got that in there, lime juice. Boom, ceviche loves lime. We're gonna drench it in lime. We're gonna take a little bit of pepper, just a tiniest amount, just a skosh, if you will, an infinitesimal amount of pepper in there. Oh, I hit myself in the crotch. That's looking kind of perfect. Give it a taste for seasoning and acid. The longer this is gonna sit, the more the juices from the vegetables and the hot dog are going to leach out and create what is called leche de tigre in the bottom of it. Mmm, dang. Oh my god. The texture of the hot dog from the coldness of that watermelon freeze right there. God dang, all right. So, now how we plate. This is, this is the part. This is the part. Individual tostadas. Yeah, there we go. You know, fun fact. Fun fact, fun facts with Josh. The original nacho recipe was served on whole tostadas. And so now when people are like, these are tostada nachos, it's like, no, those are the only true nacho. Ah, ah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. And, ah, ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I know you're probably asking, Josh, what is the serving size of this? How many people can I feed with this recipe, and then you must ask yourself, what is the appetite of your friends for hot dog ceviche? My friend group, I mean, this feeds, this feeds basically me and Marcus. We both love cold hot dogs. Uh, Dayson gets in the picture, he's actually the one who, who uh, taught me about cold, delightful luncheon meats with, <laughs> with soy and, and lime on it. Uh, I mean, Dayson's polishing this thing off just by himself. You and your friends, I mean, I don't know. Bradley? I don't know how much hot dog ceviche eats, Clarissa? No idea, I assume those are your two friends' names. There you have it, hot dog ceviche. Nice, light, bright, filled with protein, and I got a little bit of, ooh, I got a little bit of cilantro in my freeze. Herbaceous. Now this recipe on one hand, yes, it is inspired by the cravenience of AM PM, but on the other hand, is it also inspired by maximalist architecture? Because what we're doing, we have all of our raw materials here, right? We got the delicious jumbo Snickers cookie, we got some ice cream, but when you combine those things, the ice cream cookie sandwich, right? A little bit of architecture, and then we're gonna throw a ton of other stuff in there. You get a product that is more than the sum of its parts. It is anti-gestaltian. Look at me using, I took one philosophy class in college. I, I, got, a, I got a D, but I think they gave me credit for it. So what we're doing, we have some vanilla ice cream roll. I love like customizing my own ice cream. You know what I mean? It makes me feel like a little chef. And so I'm gonna chop up a Snickers bar. I'm gonna toss it into my vanilla ice cream. I'm also gonna chop up a Snickers cookie. That way you're getting even more Snickers cookie flavor into your Snickers cookie ice cream to then sandwich between your two Snickers cookies to make the ultimate Snickers ice cream cookie sandwich with Snickers ice cream cookie ice cream. All right, all right, Snickers into the pot. I'm gonna throw some nuts in there. Big nut guy, when you think nuts, Think of this guy. When you think of big nuts, think of this guy. When you think someone might be acting a little nuts. <laughs> That's not me. I think I'm pretty even keeled as a person, if we're being honest. Although I've been described by multiple psychologists as easily excitable. <laughs> Nicole laughed. <laughs> Jumbo, oh, oh, it's so soft. And, oh. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna chop this cookie up. I'm gonna save part of it for snacking because you can't cook with low blood sugar, you know? <laughs> you gotta keep yourself. It's like um, a marathon runner. Do you know there's a position on like the sidelines of a marathon that you can sign up for where you just hand the runners packs of goo? You guys know that? You need to be like a little goo hander outer. All right, so we got our cookies, we got our peanuts, we got our chopped Snickers in there. We're gonna mash this together. And then we're gonna, oh yeah. I love solids mixed with my wets. The key to customizing your own ice cream, you gotta get it melty enough to where you can add the stuff in, but then you gotta pop it back in the freezer for a little bit just to harden. Give me a sec, I'm running as fast as I can. I'm running as, I'm running as fast as I can. I love making caramel from scratch, especially during one of the midnight munchy periods, because you generally have all the ingredients in your house. You need like milk or cream, butter and sugar, and then anything else you want to add to it is super fun. Um, and so there literally are times I'll come home from a show and I'm super hungry, I got a big sweet tooth, and I'll start making my own caramel, which I've heard is unique to me and not many other people, but I want to give people, you know, the confidence to do it themselves. Hold on. The key is to get a big ice cream disc. You gotta chisel it out. Okay. That's great stuff. Controversial cooking technique, but here it is. You come to me for the controversy, right? You don't come to me to learn classic French. 
what you do, use your hands to warm up the ice cream, and then that's gonna make it more pliable. You see, the, the body heat. So use your hands to shape it. Now the cookie, pop that on top. You wanna get a good sort of outside edge right there, shape it, and now we're gonna wrap this, put it back in the freezer for about half an hour. I like to sort of compress it the way you like wrap an Italian hoogie, and you, you know, kind of smash it down a little bit. Fantastic, I'm gonna run as fast as I can. <laughs> they say never stir, okay. Controversy to cook technique. You wanna use the heat of your hands to mix the caramel, no. Um, they say you shouldn't stir caramel, here's the thing, I do it. I do it, no, we did this once, we tested it, because people are like, the sugar's gonna crystallize. Sure does, you can just strain it out, or, wow, oh my god, you get sugar, you get a little sugar crystals in your caramel, you're just eating bone-in caramel. It's like chunky peanut butter versus smooth peanut butter, it's fine. And then it's like playing whack-a-mole. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get this too. Almost put some cookie in there. Finish chewing your cookie. Um, nice amber color, it's burning, it's burning, boom! Gently warm cream right into the hot pot, and then, you, if you use cold cream, you can shock the caramel, which is a thing you do not want to do, which means that the coldness is going to actually crystallize all the sugar that you worked so hard to whack them all out. And then keep this on the heat for just a second to bring it all back up to temperature. And then you're gonna take your butter and you're just gonna whisk that right in there. I can probably use a spoon to get that in there. Boom, caramel all about keeping things at a nice gentle high heat. Here's the thing about salted caramel. I do not respect that term. I refuse to use it. That's like saying I ate a salted steak the other day. No, you ate a steak that was seasoned properly. Salted caramel is just caramel that has been seasoned properly. You have seasoned caramel, you have under seasoned caramel. This is vanilla paste. This is just for me. I like it. And this is the good stuff, dude. We, listen, I, I don't use this stuff at home. Nicole, do you use this stuff at home? Yes. Really? It's expensive. <laughs> Boom, caramel sauce is done. We're waiting for our little cookie sandwich. Hey, you, what are you doing there? Caramel sauce is done. We're waiting for a cookie sandwich to finish in the freezer as my eyes travel over to the ice cream. And I'm gonna, it's just a little appetizer portion, you know? We can make little sliders, you know? What do you feel? Oh. Lily, hello? Hello. Nicole, hello. Hi. Trevor, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming. I have made three Cravenient Midnight Munchie Snacks out of AMPM's delightful offering of Tungus, too much good stuff. And so we're all gonna try them, we're gonna rate them, we're gonna decide which one is the best, awesome. and which one the people at home should actually make. So first up, we have the apple cinnamon pastry wrapped in bacon, dust in cinnamon sugar, air fried, mm. delightful, a play on bacon wrapped dates, depending on how you view the term play on. Next, hot dog ceviche, this is my baby. <laughs> I am the most proud of this one, classic ceviche, a little bit of watermelon sour patch freeze in there, both hot dogs Ooh. instead of fresh fish. And then we have our jumbo Snickers ice cream sandwich stuffed with jumbo Snickers ice cream ice cream to create a jumbo Snickers ice cream cookie ice cream ice cream sandwich, a little bit of salted caramel on the side, please. Wow. wow. Enjoy. Wow. Where should we start, y'all? This one. Okay. okay. I've coursed this out. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, lovely, lovely. It's crispy. Oh my god. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. Bro, that's scram. Oh my goodness. That is scram. That is scram. That's pretty scram right there, man. That is. Wow. <laughs> this is so good. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite already. This is made with food from AMPM. Gosh dang right it is Maybe. apple cinnamon pastry. That's wild. See, this just looks like it's something not I wild. put my tongue in. I want to put my tongue in a lot of things. Mm. You know, I will see a street sign and I'm like, ooh, I want to put my tongue in that. Excellent start. Wow. Excellent start. First course, second course. Hot dog ceviche, a bit of a palate cleanser. I don't, oh. know, I don't know if I'm brave enough. This is, you can fold them like those little tacos. From underneath, just, Thank you know, you. the undercarriage. This, you know, this does look like a treat. <laughs> it's actually uh, really good. I love it. Delicious. <laughs> what a creation. No cap. Hey now. Hey now. Mm -hmm. Look at this guy go. Huh? Hey, everybody give it up. Give it up for this guy. I mean, come on. Shocking. I mean, two, two bangers right in a row. And I mean, look at this third one. We haven't even tried it yet, I already know. You're like a culinary alchemist. Now, is this for cutting? Yes. Okay. We could have cut this into four parts equally and I vetoed that idea because I'm very smart. Just like that guy from that one movie about bobsledding. And no, not the one you're thinking of. The Jamaican of. one? Nope. Oh, Trinidadian another? bobsled movie. Oh, Trinidadian, I'm so Unreleased. sorry. I'm just gonna cut it and pass it down, I guess. Uh, thank you. Trevor. Wow. Wow. 
Well, Not do you want here? Pass it back and I'll dip it for you. Oh, thanks. Oh, sorry. I forgot about the dipping sauce. <laughs> oh, my sauce. God. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, wow. Is this oh, okay. chef intended? Really, this is for yes. Thank okay. you. Don't get it on the hot dogs of each I'm coming back to that later. <laughs> okay. All right. I haven't eaten it yet. I can't eat it. I can't eat it. Mm. I love AMPM. Oh. <laughs> Phenomenal. A perfect mm -hmm. size for an ice cream sandwich, too. Mm -hmm. Big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Okay, okay, we gotta, we gotta decide which one is the winner. I'm gonna give you a count of three. On three, you're gonna put your hand over the winning dish in one, two, three. Ah, you all love the bacon wrapped. No, I'm, I'm going mid. I know, I know Trevor okay. loved that one. I would also vote hot dogs VJ, but I will defer to you guys. It's simple, you take a pastry, you cut it, you wrap it in bacon, you fry it, you cannot miss. And AMPM can't miss, so thank you so much to AMPM for sponsoring today's video. Visit your nearest AMPM location today. I got a lot of cilantro on that caramel. To try their craveable and convenient foods for yourself and let us know in the comments which one you try. I'm gonna go take a nap. Okay. I'm out back from the AMPM. Did we get Sweet any James. napkins at the AMPM? Left them in the car. No. <laughs> Don't know where my cues are. <laughs> That's okay. Next time, we'll see you. Hey you, cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen Apron. Available now at mythical.com.